copyright, database right, and everything else, uh, even what you didn't want to know, uh, on me the task not to keep you too long from enjoying your coffee. So I hope I can do it uh, rather quickly, and I hope that this will work. Um, but apparently not, so I shall use the mouse. Um, you've had the conclusions throughout the four presentations before me, so you basically know what we recommend. Huh? We recommend changing the law. <laughs> we recommend using the Creative Commons uh, version 4 uh, of the licenses. So this has been made clear beyond doubt. So the task is actually rather easy for me, is to wrap up everything <laughs> and put a bit everything into context. So that's what I'd like to do. Now, the first slide, you know, it's been repeated. Uh, legal <coughs> status of the scientific output is not entirely clear. So I won't dwell into the detail. It's been clearly indicated. What hasn't been said is that this legal uncertainty has gathered a lot of discussion at the European level. So you may be happy after the gloomy presentations before us saying that you know, the copyright framework is not fit for its purpose, it's a barrier to proper scientific uh, communication, it uh, uh, prevents scientists from sharing resources, etc. Well, apparently the message has gone through somewhere at the European Commission and they're now setting up um, well, initiatives to uh, first discuss the matter and hopefully in the not too distant future to uh, modify the Copyright Act or at least the Copyright Directive, um, hopefully in a way that is useful for scientific research. Now, the first initiative um, of the European Union in this sense was calling for a uh, stakeholder dialogue that they called licenses for Europe and this has gathered a lot of controversy and a lot of discussion. Why? Because well they have a work, four working groups on four different uh, issues of copyright law in Europe and one of them was a special working group on text and data mining and they gathered there uh, uh, about 30 stakeholders to <coughs> discuss possible possibilities to allow for text and data mining. Now, the problem there was, uh, and that was last year, the problem there was that uh, the uh, standpoint uh, adopted by the European Commission that was uh, catering for uh, the discussion was to only discuss licensing solutions. So the European Commission insisted that it didn't want to envisage any copyright legislation reform. It only wanted to center on licensing solutions. Well, this actually led to a third of the participants in the stakeholder dialogues to leave the table, to withdraw from the discussion because they said it, it is not what they wish. They do not wish to be limited in the, in the possibilities offered to them in, in um, examining you know, what uh, solution should be brought forward to be able to text and dumb my mind. They also wanted to examine the possibility of introducing a new uh, copyright exception and limitation to allow text and data mining. So they left the table uh, somewhere in April uh, so that, that was about a third of the t participants and the participants were um, uh, representing basically users and scientists. So the ones that did remain at the table were basically representatives of publishing industry and universities, but not many. So they, they are coming up right now with a document. Uh, it's, of course, non-binding because it's a stakeholder dialogue. It's a, it will be a set of recommendation by, by a working group that is not fully representative because a third of the people left. But the good news is, is that I heard via via that the European Commission is now considering setting text and data mining up on, the, on its uh, agenda. And they will be creating a high-level expert group <coughs> on text and data mining to, to examine how well, how copyright law could be modified in the mid-term, I guess, because nothing is really quick 
at the European Commission to uh, think of uh, solutions to allow text and data mining. Now, this is the initiative at the European Commission. Um, we have, of course, the UK. The, the whole discussion on text and data mining flared up incredibly also in the UK. So if it was a small matter or uh, a medium matter at the European level, it, it became a big matter in the UK. Uh, I've attended uh, at least two uh, meetings of experts uh, regarding text and data mining. And the, this is a text from the Intellectual Property Office. It's the uh, specialized uh, government agency dealing with intellectual property at the UK. And they are going ahead with the plan of introducing a limitation in their Copyright Act to allow, as you see, uh, data anal analysis for non-commercial research. Now, they, they are like the brave hearts of the European Union because knowing the European framework on copyright law, um, you may know that um, it is not easy, or at least it, it's highly contested that a member state may adopt a new copyright limitation that is not provided for in the framework of the Copyright Directive of uh, 2001. So data, text and data mining is not an exception that is listed in the current framework of the directive. So they still believe that in the interest of their scientific community in England uh, and the UK, they need to go ahead with this exception. So they're braving, actually, the, the current setting of the law and they are planning to go ahead with um, adopting an, a new corporate exception. The only comment that I might formulate here is that they <coughs> want to, to limit the text and data mining for non-commercial research. Um, well, it's a choice, of course, we have to uh, uh, reach a compromise and it might be the only compromise to be reached, but this would limit um, potential uh, public-private partnerships might limit, to some extent, the possibilities of text and data mining uh, for uh, activities that might not be <coughs> purely non-commercial. So this is something to consider. Um, so that's the good news that um, in the mid-term, or perhaps the long-term, the law, hopefully, will be modified because I think everybody realizes that text and data mining is the way to go in science not only for beta sciences, but also social sciences, are discovering new avenues of, of uh, interpreting texts, of gathering uh, data uh, in all fields uh, of science. And this is really the way to go, and you don't want to be limited by uh, either commercial publishers or other parties who don't grant you access or only under very restrictive license terms. So I think that with proper uh, lobby and proper uh, push in the right direction, eventually we'll get to a satisfactory solution. Now, the open air guidelines, uh, it's been mentioned also uh, throughout the presentations. This is also a core message of our study. It is crucial for data collectors and depositors to ensure first that all necessary uh, copyright permissions have been cleared prior to deposit of a data set into a repository and clearing that uh, copyright also, not, of course, means clearing the database right. So you know, you need to know that you are indeed allowed to put that data set in your collection or you need to be aware of, the f of how far you can use this data set in your own research. So this is uh, what we mean with rights clearance. You need to be aware of the permissions of all the data sets and information that you're using. And, uh, well, this brings together with the question of ownership of the materials, uh, so it's a cool picture. This might be as complex, and I'm sorry, that's not a good news, might be as complex as for museums who want to m go through mass digitization of their collection. They need to obtain permission or at least to find a way to mass digitize without getting too much of a headache. Well, scientists need to at least have a, an idea of you know, how far they can go using somebody else's data sets. So, and this is where um, license terms are very important. 
This is a slide that I made a few months ago, but uh, February. But I'm sure the, the proportion has not changed much. What this shows in very tiny character is that um, uh, the recorded full text data reuse policies worldwide. Uh, the, so the pie chart you see tells you that for almost 85% of all the data sets out there put in repositories, this, the legal status is either unknown, unstated, or undefined. This is, this is the core of my message. The data sets that are out there, we don't know what we can do with it. So this has to change, and this has to change in the rights management systems of libraries, of other institutions who take those data sets into their repository and they need to make sure that they know what they can do with it. It might be all rights restricted or it might be you know, uh, opened up under open content uh, licenses, but at least we need to know. They have to be properly labeled to tell the scientists and to tell the users what they can and cannot do with the data sets that they find in those uh, repositories. Can you data mine? Can you not data mine? What can you do? Well, for more than 85% of all the repositories out there, you don't know. One good news, yeah, so it's a, it's a message of good news and bad news. <laughs> um, and Niels talked about Narcis, and uh, Narcis is Dutch, and Narcis is closely linked to the data archiving and network services. It's also Dutch, and the Dans, uh, as you see, is um, a repository um, uh, in collaboration with Narcis, but Dans is really for, uh, it's a repository for data sets. So it's, it's closely linked to Narcis, but it's, it's purely for data sets. And when you look in Dans for specific data sets, you come into the EASY website, and I'm not sure I know exactly what EASY stands for. Excuse me? EASY archiving. So the E-A-S-Y is not an acronym. Easy archiving, thank you. Well, so this is a shot that I made for a previous presentation on the 20th of August, 2013. And I'll read you what it says because I do realize that it's too small. But in August, the dance website, which is sponsored by the Royal Academy of Science and the uh, Dutch uh, Research Council, at the time, their licensing policy was as follows. The EASY website and all material therein are property of dance and or other parties and are protected by rights, between brackets, database rights, copyrights, and neighboring rights. This implies that material may only be reproduced or used with permission from dance and according to conditions determined by dance. Moreover, this website and databases <coughs> may not be copied in whole or in part without permission by dance. Well, I don't know if it was my doing or everybody else's doing or what doing, but, just for the sake of things, yesterday, I checked the website of Dance, And surprise, surprise, this is wonderful news. When, data, when a data file is deposited in EASY, a license is granted. Dance enters into the license agreement with the holder of the rights to the data set. This can either be a person or an organization. Okay, what follows is a big change. The license is non-exclusive. This means that the owner of the data is at liberty to deposit and or make available this data in other places as well. Also, copyright is not waived when data are deposited. It continues to rest with the researcher. Also good news for the researcher. The license entitles DANCE to include the data set in the archive and to make it available under the conditions stipulated by the project leader when it is deposited. These condi conditions relate to who will have access to deposited data. According to the principles of the open access movement, research data should be made available as freely as possible. In some cases, however, it may be necessary to limit access. For this reason, DANCE offers the possibility to ca categorize data under the heading restricted access. In addition, there is the possibility of placing an embargo on data. Now, the good news is you will see, I mean, it's a change from, from uh, 
restricted access and, and you only may copy this under permission of dance to, well, depending on, on the rights of the input uh, giver, we need to uh, figure out how to give you access, but we follow principles of open access. Now, ideally, in, in the future, dance will be able to move towards perhaps adopting a Creative Commons uh, version 4 model. But this, I thought, was a very good uh, progression in the thinking of dance in uh, <coughs> trying to give researchers access under free conditions of the data sets kept by dance. So the guidelines, uh, you've heard them. Uh, use of proper access licenses, um, because if you free your, your uh, data sets and the databases uh, that contain them, then you also make sure that, that these data sets will live in the future. And that's very important you know, for curation and for uh, further science building on previous data sets. You want to have a, a living tree, a living <coughs> mechanism where people can use and, and curate and care for uh, all the data sets out there. So open access would facilitate this. Now, <coughs> it has also been pointed out to take care of compatibility issues um, between licenses, so the, the most free uh, license is a CC uh, by uh, license. Share alike might create, uh, uh, and this is what I, I, he I say here uh, in the last bullet point, that the share alike may, ha may have an impact on the reuse by commercial or otherwise parties who have proprietary business models um, and they might <coughs> feel that they, they cannot use the data sets <coughs> in a way that uh, will cater for their own business models. So it's, it's a question of, you know, what do we want to allow users to do with the data sets that are uh, produced by scientific uh, research? Do we want just only scientific research on a commercial basis to take place, or do we want to, to allow the whole wide world to do something worth, uh, worthwhile with the data sets? It's a question that each uh, inst well, institution or government will have to decide. As we saw in the UK, they decided to only um, allow non-commercial research purposes. It's a choice. It may put limitation on other players in the market. But um, anyway, uh, any move towards open access is certainly uh, to be welcomed. Uh, one last point also that I made in the previous slide, the last bullet point. Um, in Horizon 2020, um, I think we've heard, uh, not today, but a discussion last night, but I think it's coming anyway, um, that the Horizon 2020 grants will require data management plans. So if you, you, know, if you apply for a grant or if you ha apply for a Europe uh, Horizon 2020 project and you expect to be generating data, uh, you will have to put into evidence that you can manage uh, or that you have a data management plan. This, of course, can take different uh, uh, aspects. Uh, it can make, mean different things, but one of the things that it may mean to have a data management plan, in my opinion, from a legal perspective, is that you should include a proper licensing strategy, or at least a proper... Uh, F uh, workflow to be able to know what you take in, whose rights are attached to the, to the information or data that you're using, and how you will yourself license and uh, make your own data sets available to third parties and the public. So this is basically my very quick uh, conclusion, and I hope uh, I didn't keep you too long from the coffee. So thank you very much.